Hello, everyone. Thanks for taking some time to listen to our discussion today. I hope you find it informative. I'm Nathan Golden, founder and owner of Managed Guest Technologies, and we are a longtime Beam Cloud Backup and Disaster Recovery Service Provider based in Cincinnati, Ohio. Before I introduce the other panelists, I have a little housekeeping information to go over. For those on live today, we will be giving away a nice prize at the end of the webinar. Please pay attention closely as we will be asking a single question at the end based on something we cover in the webinar. The first person to answer correctly will win. We will be sure to queue up the question and let you be prepared to answer. Okay, let's get going. Today, I'm pleased to introduce representatives from two of our most critical business partners. First, we have Mario Blandini from IX Systems, and we also have Tim Kraus from Veeam. How are you doing today, Mario? I'm doing awesome. Uh, great to be with you. Yeah, no problem. And Tim, you're uh, also here. People know who you work for, Veeam. How are you doing today, Tim? I'm doing great. Thanks for having us, Nathan. Glad to be here. Glad to have hey, you. So uh, Nathan, IX has been around for about 20 years, like yourselves. And uh, how would you des describe ManageCast today, uh, who's someone who's new to you? Well, I tell them we've been in business for 22 years, so we're very well established. And we are 100% focused on backup and disaster recovery. And that is all that we do. So we've gotten pretty good at, at doing what we do. We're very focused on the backup and disaster recovery space. And uh, that would probably be the, the main points that I would want to get across to somebody. All right. Well, you've done some evolution of your infrastructure over the years. Uh, how long have you been running your current infrastructure that delivers your disaster recovery and backup services? Yeah, so we've certainly expanded over the years. So we, we've upgraded and, and uh, made things better. But uh, the, the core stack, the core technology that we're using has been in place since 2018. Uh, that's when we first bought our IX Systems TrueNAS system, our first system. Uh, we've bought several since then, but uh, that's when we first started working with uh, IX Systems and, and TrueNAS, um, and uh, pretty much our technology stack has been the same with you know upgrades since 2018. All right. Well, to talk a little bit about TrueNAS uh, itself, IX Systems is the company behind the open source product TrueNAS, and uh, we're very proud that it's the number one open storage uh, infrastructure technology on the planet. Uh, with that's uh, free for anyone to download. Uh, and we at IX, uh, we are able to support this open source effort by also offering appliances uh, that are part of your infrastructure, Nathan, that uh, provide all the benefits uh, with more of an enterprise type of experience. Uh, the idea of it being uh, open source, and you'll talk a little bit more about that, Nathan, is that it provides some a lot of different benefits. It's flexible. And uh, from a lock-in perspective, uh, you can trust that the underlying technology is gonna, gonna, gonna continue on for many years and it can be deployed virtually anywhere. And we're happy to be uh, part of the fundamental architecture and infrastructure that's behind your services as a service provider. And open source economics mean a lot to other people. I'll uh, say that uh, if you're interested in our technology, you can download and evaluate it for free. Uh, and if you're interested in the technology, heck, you might be able to use your services as, if it's a service provider that we'll cover more in this um, webcast. We are uh, a Veeam ready technology, uh, which means that we support Veeam. And for you, Tim, I assume most people know who Veeam is, but uh, for anyone who may not, how do you describe Veeam? Thanks, Mario. And uh, we're glad to be partners with IX, by the way. Um, well, you know, when I started at Veeam 10 years ago, we were a relatively small company. Uh, we had less than a thousand employees, probably a, a hundred million in revenues. And we did one thing basically really well. We backed up VMware. And since then we've expanded our portfolio. Uh, we've grown tremendously. Um, we, we had a company invest $5.5 billion into Veeam over the past couple of years. We're very strong financially. We grew 27% year over year last year. So now we're a billion dollar software company, either number one or number two in the industry, depending on how you measure. And look at all of these platforms that we can back up for you now. You know, not only VMware anymore, right? Hyper-V, the other uh, hypervisors, Office 365, Salesforce, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, they're all, they're all right down there. And um, the NAS appliances 
um, like IX systems. Very so good. basically, well, we're in, yeah, we we help customers unify their backup because we can back up virtually everything in their environment. Well, I know that uh, Veeam has won countless uh, Best of VM World awards from way back in the day, but uh, I'd say the award shelf is pretty full from a Veeam perspective. What are some of the ones that uh, you find most interesting and most satisfying working for Veeam? Here's just a few on the screen now, right? Um, Trust Radius, IDC, Forrester, probably the one that um, you know seems to have the most impact is the Gartner Magic Quadrant Award. Uh, we've been in the Magic Quadrant for several years, but as you'll notice here, Veeam is now at the highest level in the Magic Quadrant. Um, and uh, a lot of companies hire Gartner and rely on Gartner for the companies that they work with. So we're, we're pretty proud of that one. Great. Well, Nathan, you had a lot of success uh, scaling up your business. Uh, and I'm wondering, uh, what is it that you found uh, over the past couple of years that's brought more people to ManageCast uh, to take advantage of what you guys offer? Yeah, I hate to be repetitive, but you know, as I indicated before, I think it's that focus. Um, you know, since we're singularly focused on backup and disaster recovery, I think that allows us to stand out in the market. Um, and, and honestly, I think we picked the right technology. I mean, we've been using Veeam since about 2014 as a cloud service provider. Um, and, you know, that, that growth that Tim talked about, we got to ride that as well. Um, so we're, we're along for the ride and uh, it, it's definitely uh, deployed widely. Um, and so it's, uh, I won't say it's easy to get customers, but, you know, at least people have heard of Veeam, they're familiar with Veeam, they know it works well. Um, and so, you know, in a lot of ways, we're just riding the coattails of, of Veeam. You know, I don't want to leave IX systems out there too. I mean, I, I can't say it's it's helped us get a bunch of new customers necessarily, but you know, one thing it does do, and it allows me to sleep well at night uh, and feel confident going into the market and being able to, you know, provide our services and, and feel confident that we can deliver a reliable, um, you know, resilient uh, service. And, and so that goes a long way to, you know, making us successful as well. Well, uh, most of the time, no one cares what's going on in the back end, right? As yeah, a service, right. people just like a service level agreement. So this is not working, then they care. Well, of course, <laughs> and that's where I, I, I'm glad you mentioned the maturity of the, the IX uh, systems, TrueNAS software, in the sense that it provides, uh, for, in many accounts, the same or better maturity and the same or better performance, just times it costs a lot less based on us uh, offering it for free, and if you want to buy like um, the like ManageCast does appliances from us, that's how uh, we make our money, and uh, we're happy to be, you know, the technology that you chose. I believe for scalability reasons, being able to protect petabytes of data in a system that scales, and uh, something that not just works great with Beam for those backup workloads, but stuff that works great for your traditional VMware and Hyper-V workloads. Yeah, and I want to point out as well, I mean, we talk a lot about backup, but our disaster recovery aspect, uh, which we also use Veeam for, um, and, and IX system storage or TrueNAS storage, you know, we have VMware uh, in our environment, for our DRAS environment. We also run Hyper-V, and I can tell you that uh, the TrueNAS solution works great with VMware as well as uh, Hyper-V. Yep, and uh, for you, uh, Tim, Veeam, I mean, how has ManageCast been su as successful as they have been? I think there's probably three things that have made them so successful with us. One is they're focused, um, as Nathan has explained. They're not all things to everybody, right? They're backup and disaster recovery as a service, and they focus on that, right? Um, and they focus on Veeam, um, so they don't have a, you know, a whole portfolio of uh, products that they have to stay up on. And uh, the second thing is that they're very technical. They've got great engineers, super technical staff over there. Um, they've, they've, they're one of the first to get their Veeam competencies in both backup as a service and DR as a service. And probably the third thing is they're innovative. Um, so you'll hear a little bit more about some of the innovation that they've done. Uh, they've actually won an award from Veeam for some of that. And uh, so they're constantly trying to make their product better, 
Um, there's some interesting things coming down the road. I'm not going to steal Nathan's thunder, but I'll just plant the seed to folks out there that they've got some really cool, innovative stuff coming in the future as well. Very good. Well, uh, Nathan, ransomware, I'm sure you're hearing about that um, when it comes to everything. And, and a proper backup and DR strategy it goes a long way to protecting against ransomware. Um, how much are you hearing this from customers today? Uh, uh, almost every day, you know, at least once a week, probably minimum. Um, I think it's very top of mind for most customers, both new customers as well as our existing customers. Um, and so we've got to have, you know, methods to reassure them that we're, we're taking every precaution we can to protect their data. Um, and I will point out maybe two uh, aspects of the Veeam technology that we talk about when we, we talk about protecting against ransomware. And the first one is called Insider Protection, which is part of Veeam Cloud Connect. And you can think of it as like a recycle bin. Um, so in the case that, you know, your, your local uh, backups get corrupted or or deleted, and then you know if that deletion happens to hop across to the source fighter, which we've never actually seen before, but if it did happen, uh, we have the insider protection turned on for our clients, and so that data, uh, even if it's deleted, we we continue to save that data, um, you know, to to protect against that. Um, the other aspect of Veeam that we leverage heavily is the immutable object storage. Um, and we have the capability of, of storing that data in what I call a virtual air gap. It's not a true air gap, but it's uh, it's it's a very good virtual air gap. Um, and, uh, you know, it's basically immutable storage that we can't even change uh, even if we wanted to. So those two aspects of Veeam really help us uh, protect our customers against ransomware. Well, Tim, immutability is one part of it. Uh, I've always known the uh, the rule of backup best practices is three, two, one. But uh, in this new era, the second uh, you know score of the 21st century here, uh, that number's gotten bigger. Talk to us about that. Sure, Mario. So I think everybody in IT has heard of the three, two, one rule, and that is you should have three sets of your data. You should have at least two different types of media, and one of those backups should be off-site. But because of ransomware, we've also added the one and the zero. So now it's the three, two, one, one, zero rule. <laughs> and uh, that one is a immutable backup, right? It's an offline or an immutable uh, air-gapped backup. Uh, that is just absolutely crucial these days to either prevent uh, ransomware or recover from ransomware, because it's probably not a, a, a question of if you're gonna get hit by ransomware or malware, but when. And then finally, the, the last zero is to make sure that your, your air-gapped backup is a good backup and has been verified. And so that's what the 32110 rule is now. And uh, hopefully we're not, we don't have to add any more uh, digits to the rule, but that's what it is these days. Great. Well, uh, Nathan, most folks may not start with this, but uh, immutability is something that you can add on later. Talk a little bit about how your customers are thinking about this. Yeah, so we always offer the immutable object option on all of our proposals. Not everyone signs up for that immediately, but it's it's kind of surprising to me how many times I get calls, maybe it's after they've been a customer for six months or a year, maybe there's a news event, maybe there's a close call and, you know, they call me up and say, hey, how can I, you know, further protect and, and maybe they remember that I've offered immutability in, in the past. So really without even me prompting heavily, I, I get calls all the time about turning on immutability for, uh, you know, people's backups. Um, and so we, we definitely, after the fact, um, uh, and engage that that capability. Um, sometimes we do it up front. Sometimes they're really worried about it day one, and that's fine. We can turn it on day one. Um, other times they, you know, will wait and, and turn it on when when they feel there's a better need. Hey Tim, you mentioned before the cybersecurity insurance and how those uh, rates uh, are changing uh, because of uh, so much ransomware. Uh, how has uh, Veeam seen this, and how do you describe? balancing putting stuff like this in versus getting insurance or both yeah i just heard about a school district whose cybersecurity insurance increased 340 percent in one year 
Um, you know, the, the, the cybersecurity companies are starting to, you know, the underwriters are starting to understand the risks involved with ransomware and malware. And so they're now requiring their customers to put some things in place. Um, and so that's one of the driving factors right now why people want immutable backups is to lower their cyber security premiums. And it does make a difference if you can if you can uh, legitimately verify that you have immutable backups, your premiums will be lower. Great advice, uh, Tim. Hey Nathan, in terms of acquisition cost, I think a lot of folks would understand buying IX infrastructure and a subscriber or licensing VM so uh, Veeam software is part of this acquisition cost. But the real cost of backup is a little more comprehensive than that. How do you go about helping the folks that you're talking to understand just the reality of uh, how it's complex for lack of a better uh, word, but there's a lot of moving parts and that's one of the reasons why people might opt for a service for, versus doing it themselves. How do you normally consult with folks who are, who are looking for your services in this area? Right, I mean, that, that comes up a lot on my conversations with clients. I mean, I think they, often get in the mode of looking at the cost they can easily see you know what does it cost to buy some storage what does it cost to buy some software uh you know do i need a colo site i need bandwidth you know those are all things that you can easily see and what i say is above the water um they can easily identify and not just with backup and dr with, with many solutions that the true cost and i would say especially with the disaster recovery side is the true cost is the hidden cost, is the operational cost. It's setting it up, testing it, troubleshooting it, um, continuing to monitor it and make sure that it's working for you. Um, and, and those are the hidden costs and, and they're hard to quantify. And those are the types of things that we try to take on uh, for the customer. So we have to explain our value and what we're providing. You know, we're not just providing some disk and a target. Um, we're providing a lot of expertise, uh, deep experience, and uh, you know, just making sure that everything stays working and helping the customers test and troubleshooting issues that inevitably happen. Um, and, and so we really have to you know educate our customers that it's not just about you know some top line costs. You have to look at all these hidden costs that are that are extremely hard to quantify. Indeed. Well, Tim, do you have any thoughts from a Veeam perspective? Because uh, MSPs and your your back your job at Veeam is specifically in the service provider area. Uh, what options are available to MSPs that they might be able to avoid this work? Thanks, Mario. Yeah, so my job is to take care of about 350 MSPs like ManageCast in the Ohio Valley area. Um, by the way, they're one of our top partners in, 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 that, uh, in that group. And what I would say to a small MSP who is thinking about getting into the Veeam Cloud and Service Provider program is, you know, definitely take a look at the program. It's a great program. It's been around about 10 years now, so it's it's probably one of the most mature uh, service provider programs of any vendor. But one of the things that makes ManageCast unique is that not only do they take care of end users, they take care of a lot of MSPs as well. So their customers are both end users and other MSPs. You'll hear about some innov innovative things that they do for their MSPs uh, here in a little bit. But I think if I'm a, a small MSP thinking about getting into the Veeam business, I would think about partnering with ManageCast at least to get started, right? Because the tip of the iceberg, you know, it looks like, okay, I'll just go rent some software from Veeam. I'll go buy some hardware from IX systems, off we go. But what they don't understand is all the other things that are involved that Nathan has been dealing with for years and years and years. And, and they, you know, they've got it down to a science. So I would just encourage them to potentially think about partnering with ManageCast instead of trying to do it all themselves. Fantastic. Well, Nathan, in terms of uh, technical DR preparedness, obviously, your team has a lot of uh, expertise there, and there are some things in order for it to be successful that really need to be addressed. And so uh, what advice do you have for uh, folks that are looking to have these things answered and how you 
uh, deliver those in your service. Sure, and this is getting into that below the water of the iceberg, you know, type of issues. Um, you know, I think everybody does backups, right? But but can you really use backups for effective disaster recovery? I mean, maybe, but you know, how long is it going to take? Is it going to take days? Do you have equipment to restore to if you needed it? Um, you know, you have to think about those things. You know, the recovery time and and whether or not just having backups is is enough. Um, even if you restore that, you know, information, maybe you do it to another site, another data center. What's the performance like, right? Um, you're, you're, used to have, you're used to having gigabit connections for all users, and now you've got all users going over 100 meg pipe to a remote data center. Is performance going to be acceptable? Um, are there things that we have to do to overcome those challenges? Um, and, and one of the most important things to talk about when we talk about DR is access to the DR environment. How do users actually get to it, right? Um, are they going to be working from home? They're going to be working from Starbucks. You can have another location. Uh, those types of issues have to be worked out. Um, and then testing, you know, we can say, oh, we have a DR plan and we, you know, have a way to fail over, but unless you test it, you don't know if it actually works well. And I tell people all the time that we will uncover issues. Um, and we, that's why we test is we want to find those issues and fix them so that when you do have a real DR event, it can go, you know, more smoothly for you. Um, and I also say that IT is always changing, technology is always changing, and so you're never done um, with, with DR. Um, it's, a, it's an ongoing process, and we recommend testing at least once per year. We have some customers that test once a month and once a quarter, but probably minimum once a year, because you go a couple years and you haven't tested. Um, you can't be positive that your DR solution will, will work correctly for you when you need it the most. Um, and then another overlooked aspect is failback, right? If you fail over all your systems to another location and you start updating that data there, uh, okay, and you recover your original location, how do you how do you fail back, right? It's the opposite of failover. You got to fail back that information and, and make that a smooth, uninterrupted process. Super. Well, one of the things I, I uh, found impressive about ManageCast uh, is that you have developed some intellectual property of your own. And in doing so, you won a prestigious Veeam Innovation Award. So uh, last year, congratulations on that. Um, tell us a little bit about how uh, you started that effort and how it resulted in you being recognized for innovation. Yeah, sure. And we are very proud of that. Um, we, we didn't really set out to, to do anything spectacular here or anything. I mean, we, we um, you know, created the uh, management portal or the Veeam portal for ourselves. Um, we needed a good way to be able to monitor and keep an eye on hundreds of clients in a very effective, efficient way. I had to make my staff efficient and being able to check backups. And you know, if a backup didn't run at a customer site, uh, we needed to know that. Um, and so we couldn't rely on email notifications or you know, other types of reporting. So uh, we set out to create our own tool. Um, it was so successful in our organization and made such a positive impact that I thought, well, other service providers probably have these same issues if they're you know, running Veeam uh, or running anything really, but I can talk specifically about Veeam. And so we made our tool available for other service providers to use. Um, and I wanna be clear, I mean, yes, if, you, if you're a small MSP and, and you wanna host with us, at least in the beginning, that, that's absolutely fine, but we work with other MSPs that already have their Veeam infrastructure but they need, you know, that that additional ability to see what's going on and keep an eye on their on their clients. And so we developed this technology to be used at other MSPs. And we have several other MSPs uh, that actually leverage us, even though they're running all the Veeam infrastructure, they're running the backups, they store all the data. All we're doing is providing that that monitoring interface. Um, and so it's not a hey, use us or or not. Well, if you have your own Veeam infrastructure, we'll be happy to to work with you on that as well. Well, that brings us uh, to the end of our uh, webcast today, and we'll uh, also take some questions. But I'll let give you the floor, Nathan, to conduct our prizes. All right. Well, I'm actually going to introduce Cassidy Howard. She's our director of marketing. And uh, Cassie will be able to tell you the, what we're going to do here, like I mentioned in the beginning, and Cassie will probably repeat it, but uh, we have a question we're going to ask here. But uh, Cassidy, go ahead and uh, take it over here. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks, everybody, so much for joining again today. Um, we're super excited to be able to give 
one of you participants here, one of these Bose Solo 5 TV soundbar systems. And um, so this is kind of how it's gonna work here. In just a second, we are going to display the question on the screen. And in your GoToWebinar control panel that is on your screen, you should see a little box for questions. And we put um, a little screenshot up there so that you can easily find that. And um, as Nathan mentioned earlier, the first person to respond with the correct answer will win the prize. So, and, and Cassidy, um, before you post that question, I want to let everybody know that we have an offer, a free offer after this that's available to anybody. Uh, so please don't, you know, exit too soon um, after we discover who uh, wins here. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, have a free offer that uh, applies to anybody. Yeah, great. So I think hopefully that gave everybody enough time. So let's see the question. All right, so this says, with ransomware, the 321 rule of backup has evolved with extra numbers. What is the new rule of backup? Oh my gosh, we already got people really answering quick. All yeah, right. I want, I want that prize too, man. Too bad. Not <laughs> okay, the first um, correct answer was from JPB. Um, so I will coordinate with you after this and um, send you an email to get the prize to you. So congratulations. Nice. Very fun. Congrats. Okay. So Nathan, that, that uh, failover intro test, the offer that you're uh, making available to anyone, and you can tell your friends too if you're on this uh, broadcast, if any of your uh, folks that you uh, know of in the industry could uh, benefit from the same uh, offer, uh, we'd love for you to share that. Take it away, Nathan. Okay, yeah, keep your draws fit, right? Uh, failover intro test. And the reason we came up with that, we just kind of happened onto this because we were giving demos to customers. You know, people were wondering about what we could do and how we did it. And we would actually show them how they would fail over a server. And they were so impressed and surprised at how easy it was. It was like, wow, we need to probably do this more. Um, and it's not that hard. Um, so what we do is we take one server um, in your environment. It could be a, your most critical server or it could be a server you don't care that much about. It's just a test, right? But uh, we'll, we'll demonstrate the, the failover of that one server to our DR environment. I mean, honestly, if you've got you know, two or three servers, I, I, I don't mind. Just don't give me 10 or something, but at least one server. Um, we will you know, replicate that server to our environment. We will discuss the steps required to fail over that server. Um, and we also talked to you about the network extension appliance, the Veeam network extension appliance, and that's probably the most um, valuable hidden technologies out there. Um, people own Veeam everywhere, and they automatically get the network extension appliance, um, and they don't even know they have that. And so we use the network extension appliance, and what that does is it allows the server running in our DR environment to appear as though it's on your local network. Um, and so that's a very powerful demonstration to show how we can fail over a server to the DR environment and you still have access to the server as though it's on your local environment. Although the latency and speed may be different, but uh, you can still get to that server as though it's on your environment. So it's a cool demonstration when people see it. I mean, it's their environment, their stuff, right? Their server, they can see it and feel it and uh, understand it really well. And we're happy to, to do that with anybody that's uh, interested in seeing that. It doesn't take very long to set up and, and pretty easy to demonstrate. All right, with that, uh, do you want to take us, Cassidy, through any questions that have been uh, asked during the broadcast? Yeah, absolutely. We do have a couple um, already and feel free to add some more. If you have any, we'll try to get through any that we can. Um, but the first one we have here is, does Veeam back up Office 365? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I can take that one, uh, Nathan, or and yeah, maybe bro. you can yep, pile bro. on. So yes, <laughs> the answer is yes, we back up Office 365. And some people might say, why would I need to back up Office 365? Doesn't Microsoft do that for me? The answer is no, they don't. There's a shared responsibility uh, clause, if you will, when you purchase 
Office 365, and um, you know Microsoft is responsible for keeping the application up and running, but the customer is responsible for their data. So Nathan, did you want to explain your service for backing yeah, up? Office and, yeah, and before I do that, I'll, I'll say that's probably one of the most overlooked things. Uh, people go to AWS or Azure or Office 365, and they don't even think about data protection or retention policies or any of those things they used to have. Um, but if you Google um, Microsoft Shared Responsibility Model or AWS Shared Responsibility Model, you will see from both those organizations a chart that shows what you're responsible for. And the number one thing that you're responsible for is the data. So please uh, understand that and don't underestimate your need to have that. And, and yes, we um, uh, provide Beam uh, backup for Office 65 as part of our service. And we have many customers that run that. Um, we are releasing a, a pretty nice web front end that's going to make it very easy for customers to provision their Office 365 uh, backups. Um, we've, we've pretty much got that released now, but with only a handful of customers, but uh, here in the next 30 days, that should be available to, uh, to anybody. So absolutely, we can protect Office 365 data as well as AWS and Azure data. And just an add on to that, we, um, Nathan showed one of our top engineers this uh, portal that he's talking about for Office 365, and it actually does things that the Veeam portal that will be coming out soon does not even do. So it's a it's a it's a pretty That's cool. Why we it. <laughs> <laughs> Back to some of that innovation that Manage Cast does. Awesome. Okay, I think this next question is something you briefly touched on earlier, Nathan, but I think it's a really important one to maybe reiterate, but it's how frequently do you think disaster recovery should be tested? A minimum once a year. Um, it really comes down to your organization, but I mean, I would say minimum once per year. Um, you know, some people do it quarterly, some people do it more often, but uh, I, I would do minimum once per year. The other aspect of that is if you've had a major technology refresh in your environment. So if you've upgraded a, a core application, a critical application, you know, you upgrade your ERP system or switched ERP systems or switched whatever, and it's a critical system, you probably should do some DR testing soon after you've made that change to make sure that you can fail that system over. Great. Okay, and I think this is our last one. Um, does ManageCast help with creating a disaster recovery plan? Yes, absolutely. So we're, we're very skilled at that. Um, we've worked with many other clients, so it's not just about, hey, here's your server running. I mean, you know, the fit test is cool and, and we can fail over a server and that part is relatively easy, right? But the, the more complex piece is, how your users are going to access that, the performance, um, you know, going over slower connections, um, and uh, just the logistics of, of how that's going to work. So we absolutely will help uh, customers with those disaster recovery plans. We will document run books, and those are good for the customer as well as us. So you know, if somebody does a test, and we help them with that disaster recovery planning. And then you know, 12 months goes by, and we do another DR test. Well, we we pull out that information from the previous test, yeah, maybe some of it has changed, but it, it reminds us, okay, here are the issues that we faced before, here's the process, here's the order of things, and so absolutely, we will be very uh, involved in that if, if you want us to be. Now, some customers already have a pretty good disaster recovery plan, maybe they're switching from another provider to us and they already have that, so we don't have to provide it, um, but if you want it or need it, we, we do provide those services, absolutely. Awesome. Well, unless anybody else um, has any that they want to put in the chat right now, I think that's all we have for questions. Thanks, everybody. Oh, Thanks again go. for attending. Sorry, we have one more. Okay. Um, does ManageCast provide a Veeam ready appliance similar to Datto? Uh, yes, to some degree. So, uh, Veeam is, is very hardware agnostic. Um, we, in, in our business, and you don't have to do this, but in our business, we, we take Dell servers. We put Windows Server 2019. Uh, we, we usually RAID, run RAID 10 or, or RAID 6 on, on those systems. I mean, these are 12 drive bay Dell servers, so it's commodity hardware. 
and we put Veeam on that, and uh, we we don't force our customers to to get those appliances. I think Datto may force you to to get those appliances. If if you're a uh, you know a Dell partner and you want to provide those appliances, that's absolutely fine. We don't care if the customer already has storage and and somewhere to run Veeam. That's absolutely fine. So we don't force anybody to use our appliances. Uh, but some customers don't have that storage, or they want a you know a turnkey single solution and if they need a uh, storage appliance to run beam on uh, we can absolutely uh, provide that and for really big deployments i mean if it goes beyond like a 12 bay uh dell system then that's where we can bring in ix and you know we can scale into the hundreds of terabytes or petabytes or whatever whatever size you need on that so awesome well, I think that is that is all we have now. Great. Well, thank you, everybody. I really appreciate taking the time to uh, to talk to us or let us talk to you today. Thank you. All right. Great being with you, Nathan. Thanks, Thanks Nathan. Thanks, Cassidy. Bye, everybody. Bye.